come out of the grave and be loosed. Those of you who are watching who are still in the grave. So Jesus is saying to you this morning, on this resurrection day, he's saying to you, come out and be loosed. Come out of the grave. Come out in that depression. Come out of your mental illness. Come out of whatever it is that wall you build around you. Jesus is calling you out. He wants to loose you. But it requires something from you, isn't it? It requires faith. It requires faith. Why do I say that? Because you gotta actually move. You gotta actually come out. You gotta get up out of the bed, right? It takes faith. But Jesus is calling you. He's saying, come out of the grave. The question is to all of us who are Christian, whom the Lord have called by his name, those of us who are Christ's follower. Why are we still in the tomb? Why we place ourselves in the tomb? Why we still wearing the grave clothes that Jesus found us with when he called us? Why we refuse to leave behind those things that the Lord has been talking to you about? You know those things. You know what he's been talking to you about. You know the common stuff that, you know, we don't want to forgive. You know, we make our heart our heart. You know, our heart our heart. We, you, you know what I'm talking about. This person that you refuse to let go. You know, this, this, this thing that you have that you not let it go. You know what I'm talking about. And then you keep inviting these things into your life that wants to keep you where you at. This is why, you know, so many of us, it's unbelievable how so many of us are suffering. We are in prison mentally. Mentally. The enemy hold us captive in that grave. When Jesus already had set us free. The enemy hold us captive in unforgiveness. When Jesus, before he died, before he gave up his spirit, he gave up his spirit. That means Jesus could have spent days on the cross if he wanted to. When he gave up his spirit, before he did that, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. But yet we allow the enemy to hold us captive, keep us in that cave, keep us in that tomb with unforgiveness. Why we insist on letting the enemy take over? The thing is, we need to come out. Jesus is calling you out. Jesus is saying to you, what are you doing in there? Get up. Come out. Just like he lifted up his voice and shout and said to Lazarus, come out. So Jesus is calling you by name this morning and he's saying, come out and be loosed. He's giving what he's showing me. He's giving that demon. He's giving Satan a command and say, lost him. Lost her. But before that command can go forth, before the demons, before Satan can obey, you must make the move. You must walk by faith. You must come out. You don't feel that present.
Get up and do that anyway. That's faith. That means you coming out. Because you hear the voice of the Lord. You can hear God calling you. You can hear God saying coming out. But you know what you're doing? You ignore it. You letting the, the enemy play in your mind. Say no, that's not it. He's sending people your way. But you're still ignoring it. But Jesus is saying, you can hear me. Now, if you will make the choice, if you will just come out, uh, and now, uh, my command already had gone out. Uh, I already commanded the enemy to lose you. So all you have to do is make the step. You don't feel like praying? Pray! You don't feel like clapping? Clap! You don't feel like dancing? Dance before the Lord. Whatever that you don't feel like doing when it has to do with God, do it. And watch what happens. You coming out of the grave. You making a step. You don't feel like reading the word? <laughs> Read it. Even a verse for the day. Even a verse for the day. But Jesus is calling us out. So many of us, so many of us, we are singing that we are free. We are singing, oh, Jesus died. He set me free. Oh, da, 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 da. We sing, we wave, we clap. But yet, we are in prison. But yet, we held captive. But yet, we remain in a tomb. But yet, we still walking around with grave clothing on. What are your grave clothing? <laughs> Unforgiveness, hatred, bitterness, that relationship the Lord keep telling you to walk away from. The so-called friends that you know keep dragging you, dragging you, trying to make it, they keep making you going back. You keep doing moonwalk back into the wall. It's your great clothing you carry no around. And the Lord kept saying, I want you to be free. I want to lose you. I want, you know, he said, take off that grave clothes. Take off those grave clothes. Adam loved his wife so much, he sacrificed himself by taking a bite out of the forbidden fruit. He probably think, hey, I'll deal with the consequences later. I don't think he knew what the consequences was. But the whole point of that, the Lord was showing me. Adam loved one person. He gave his life for one person. But in John 3, 16, he says what? For God so loved the whole world that he gave his only son. Adam made a sacrifice for one person, but God the Father sacrificed his own son for the entire world because he loved us. Adam loved his wife until the fall. Because Adam then nobody was getting into it. <laughs> because the moment, the moment he, 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 he fall, the moment sin comes in, the moment they went to hide, the moment shame comes in, the moment guilt comes in, the moment everything else comes crashing on him. You know when God was passing judgment, what happened? After God passed judgment, you know what Adam said? Oh, oh, oh you no longer eat. You no longer the bone of my bone. You no longer the flesh of my flesh. Your name now is Eve to prove to you. Adam's love was not unconditional. But Jesus' love is unconditional. God the Father's love is unconditional. Not until we messed up. Not until we say something. Not until we go somewhere we shouldn't go. God loves us no matter what. And this is what today is all about. He loves his son so much. 
he gave them up for you. But when he gave them up for you, he, God never had the intention for after he sacrificed his son and then you still stay in the tomb. You still staying in the filth that you are in. You still allow the enemy to lie to you. Guess what happened? Thank you. But God said, uh, they were talking. Uh, God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Uh, they were talking. They said, you know what? You know what? Let's not leave men in the garden. Let's they eat on that fruit of the, of the tree of life. God kicked them out. We may look at this as a bad thing. <laughs> no, it wasn't. God showed me if he didn't have them, he didn't kick them out of the garden, they would have, the enemy would have deceived them again to eat of the fruit of the tree of life. That was certain plan to have Adam to eat from the fruit of the tree of life so that Adam could die, could stay the way he is forever and ever. That was the plan. But God is faithful. God is faithful. The same way Satan have a plan. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy, isn't it? He wants to steal everything you got. He wants to kill you, and he wants to destroy you. But God has a plan. He has a plan. His plan is to give you life. That's what he says in Jeremiah 29, 11. Why? He wants to give you life, but Satan wants to destroy you. The same plan he had for Adam back in the garden, he still had the same plan to see how he can get you to die in the condition that you are in. Hey, hey hallelujah. But God is faithful. God is saying to you, come out. I'm kicking you out of that grave. I'm kicking you out. I want you to come out. I want to set you free. I want to let you loose. Because Satan have a plan for you. You are in that deep depression of yours because Satan wants to keep you there. He wants you to die there. Just like he wanted to do that with Adam. But God did not allow him to do that. Hey, you better believe he's not going to allow him to do that to you. Because he loves you with an unconditional love. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what you did. It doesn't matter where you went, you shouldn't go. It doesn't matter what you did, you should have done. Oh my God, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Jesus is saying, I want you to come out. Get up, come out of that grave. Come out. Because Jesus refused to let Satan execute that plan. He didn't execute it back then. God didn't allow him. God didn't let that take place. You better believe he's not going to let that take place in your life. But guess what? Satan is still working. He's still doing that. He's still doing that. what he's doing. Just like I can imagine how he's going to play in, in, in Adam's mind. He comes in and play in your mind as well. Saying these things. All these things he's saying to you. And then you sit there and like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. You keep agreeing with everything he's saying. The more you agreeing, the more you eating of that fruit he's feeding you, of that lies he's feeding you, and his intent is to keep you in that grave. His intent is to keep you in that garden. His intent is to make you eat of that fruit to keep you there so that you can die the way you are. 
I have a question for you. Are you going to let him? Are you going to let him do that? Or are you going to cry out to the Lord? Are you? Jesus has made the provision already. Jesus made the provision. He died for your sin. He died for your mental illness. He died for your bipolar. He died for your, for, for your high blood pressure. He died for your diabetes. He died for that cancer. He died. He took all of it upon himself. He died so that you can, that when they put that thing on that thorn upon his head, his blood shed, that was for your mental health. And he took it upon himself. For you, he made the provision, he made the sacrifice, and now he's asking. You know, when God called Adam out, they had to come out. That means they take a step, a step of faith, because you know, you know, when we sin, we are slaves to sin, right? When we sin, guess what happened? We tend to hide. When we sin, we tend to do those things that we don't want to do because we are shame. Shame comes in, guilt comes in, condemnation comes in. All of those are from the enemy. The moment the enemy make them fall, and then he put all those things upon them. They were ashamed to approach God and everything, even though God was calling them. But they still took the step of faith, you know, even though they were making excuses before the Lord, but they took the step of faith and come out. And now God is saying to you this morning, those of you who are watching, those of you who are sitting there in your grave clothes, feeling so comfortable with it, Oh, you're walking around with it. And I'm telling you, you see, in the word it says, Martha said, Lord, there is a stick. Oh, that means, uh, Lord, he is thick. He is thick. But Jesus quickly said, then I said to you, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. Jesus is saying to you, if you believe in me, if you believe the word I said to you, if you believe what I talked to you about, he said you will see the glory of God. Jesus doesn't care how sticky you are. He doesn't care you've been laid on the grave, in the hole, or the wherever you put yourself in the bedroom. It smells like death. Jesus does not care. He said, come out. Come out. I don't care how sticky you are, but I want you to come out. I don't care you've been there for four days. I don't care you've been there for four hours or four days or four weeks. I don't care you've been there for four years. But Jesus said, come out. If you believe me, if you believe the word I said, I said I'm with you. I said I'm never going to leave you. Do you believe that? If you believe it, you're going to see the glory of God. You're going to see you walking out of that grave. But you have to make the step. You got to come out. When Jesus called Lazarus out, he came out like this. He came out like this, bowed head to toe, but he came out. What's stopping you? I know Satan put chains on your feet. I know you put chains in your arm. I know you chains you in the neck. I know you put things around your face. You can't see. But did you just say, I don't care you got chains on your feet. I don't care you got chains in your arm. I don't care you are bound in the neck. I don't care you got things around your face. But did you just say, I want you to come out. I want you to come out, Jesus said. Are you listening? I want you to come out, says the Lord. Because the sacrifice I have made is not in vain. Don't you realize by now that I love you with an unconditional love? It's not like the way a family member can love you. It's not like a man or woman can love each other. Don't you see? I just explained to you, Adam only loved his wife until the fall. But me, I love you, says the Lord, until the end. He said, I will never leave you. 
I will never forsake you. Why would you believe me, says the Lord? Why you insist on staying where you are, says the Lord? I am talking to you, says the Lord. Come out. Come out and be loosed. I'm relieving you. I'm taking off the grave clothes of you. I am making you new again. I am turning your shame into glory. I am giving you all your gladness. I'm putting the grammar of praise upon you, says the Lord. Why won't you come? Why won't you make the effort? There are some things I can't do until you make the move. I need you to cooperate with me, says the Lord of hosts. Why won't you? Can't you realize by now how much I love you? I give up my son for you. God is saying, but I want you to come out. Come out. I'm calling you in a loud voice and you can hear me. You can hear me. All I want you to do is make the step. Come out of that bedroom of yours. Come out. Rise up and stop giving me praise. Rise up and stop singing. Rise up and stop clapping. Rise up and stop dancing. Because while you're doing that, says the Lord of hosts, I am losing you of your grave clothes. I'm setting you free. I'm setting you free. The word of the Lord. And I pray you receive that. I don't know for who that is, but I'm telling you, you need to receive that. You need to receive it. God have a plan for your life. The life, the plan he has is to give you a better life. Hope for the future. He doesn't hate you. Don't listen to those lies. Now it's time to stand up and tell the enemy, okay, now you had your fun. Now get out.